In today's video we're going to talk about my 2003 TB48 Nissan GU Patrol getting defected and removed from the roads, the rules, laws and regulations surrounding this and what it took to get the patrol fully engineered, legal and back on the road. I was able to ride passenger with the engineer that did on the day so I got some cool footage of everything that went into it including the brake testing and the swerve testing. Proudly supported by our back equipment. Tread. Superior engineering. And in part by. From the start of first buying this patrol, my aim was always to make it engineerable. So I was gonna do modifications that I knew I could make legal with the right process and certification. That being the 35s and the suspension and the exhaust, few bits and pieces. But how it works is once you actually put those modifications on your car, say the 35s, you legally can no longer drive it on the road, even if you're gonna get it engineered until you actually have it engineered. Which there was a short period there where I was doing that, I was obviously running the risk and I was fully aware of that. It is a little bit of a tricky one because when they engineer your car, they do everything top to bottom. So how your car sits when they engineer it, you know, looking at bull bars, snorkels, rock slide, suspension, tires, long range tank, exhaust, the whole everything. So as soon as you put one of those mods on, you then basically have to take your car off the road until everything is done and then you can get it engineered. That's a little bit of a slow process and I couldn't really just have the car off the road for six months while that was going on. But anyways, I'm just trying to be honest about my situation. I ran that risk and I got defected for it. So police pulled me over um, it was actually, I finally had the car fully done. So I'd had the exhaust, the rear bar, the long range tank. You would have seen one of those final build videos on YouTube. Those last few mods done. And I was like, cool, okay, ready to get it engineered now. I'd already spoke to like the engineer about it. I had it all lined up. I was just waiting to get it all together so I could give him a time and date that we could do it. But in that time frame between getting it fully finished and getting that engineering certificate and all passed was, yeah, when I got defected by the police so he pulled me over on the highway and the police officer was really nice about it he was really cool because i'd explained to him i went through all the mods i said look i understand that right now they haven't got the certificate to show them as legal but these are all legal mods went through it all with him showed that both sway bars were in all the suspension was properly done you know had the tires there he said i'll give you a few more weeks to get your certification for this after that your car's off the road until you get your certification done. So it says here on the thing, it says <clears throat> repairs are required to suspension, wheels and tyres, which just means, you know, he's, he's, then he's wrote there, engineering certifi certificate required for suspension, modification and increased size. And he's giving you there when the vehicle must not be used after. He didn't find me, which was very nice of him because you can get decent fines for this. I think he sells six to eight hundred dollars something like starting that depending on what mod you got on it obviously you know so that was the defecting of the patrol part now before we run through actually engineering the patrol and the process that was required how it all works i'll just run through the legalities around full drives and modifying them in australia more specifically new south wales because <laughs> this is one of the issues and it'd be great if they had just one law across australia but they don't I think I have heard word they are moving towards that potentially. But for the moment, each individual state in Australia has their own rules and regulations surrounding modifying a four-wheel drive. So depending on where you are in Australia, you'll have to look up your own state's laws, but we're gonna look at the New South Wales ones, one today because that's where I live. So I'll pop up on the screen here. This is the New South Wales Roads and Transport's official documents for modifying cars and four-wheel drives and how it works. So I'm gonna scroll down to three and then 3.1. Now this is the first category of modifications. It says changes that do not require assessing or certifications. So the modifications that you can do that are still fully legal to run on the road. So an example of this, it says there if you have a look at uh, 3.2 B changes in the diameter of the wheel and tire combination of up to 
of the largest size specifi specified by the vehicle manufacturer. So what that means is whatever t size tires come with your car, you can increase that size by 7% and it's still be fully legal. Anything above that then goes into the engineerable category. Now when I say anything above that, there is an engineerable limit as well. You can't just go put 42 inch tires on your patrol and then say, oh thanks, can I get this engineered now? So we'll come to that next, but you've got your minor modification bar, and then you've got your engineerable bar, and then you've just got your ridiculous off the charts bar. And then just back up to 2A, talks about suspension there, because this is the big one, tires and suspension. It's the one that everyone always wants to know, everyone always does, and everyone always talks about. So it says, except where specified below, modification to the suspension that does not increase or decrease the vehicle's ride height by more than 50 mil. So that means you can put a two inch lift and up to a 7% tire increase size, which is normally one to two, it might be two sizes bigger, could be just one depending on your vehicle. And then 2C, it says modification to the ride height of up to 70 mil. So what it means is between tires and suspension, you can only increase your vehicle's ride height within 75 mil. Keeping in mind, this is New South Wales laws. So examples of this would be with most of your modern IFS utes that a lot of people own, you can put a two inch lift on it, you can increase your tire size to 32s, still be legal. Anything over that, you're not legal anymore. That's where you need to be engineered. And that brings us down, I'll go to the next category in this document, 3.2, modifications that require assessing and certification. And this is where it comes into play, what I did in the patrol. So legally I could have put, I think, maybe two inch and 33s on this, but because I got 35s, I'm now in the engineerable category. So it says there 3.2 AI. So a change in a vehicle suspension that increased the ride height between 50 mil and 125 mil. Talks about their body lifts, a change in the diameter of the wheel and tire combination in excess of 7%. So once you go above that 7%, and then the last category is 3.3, modifications not covered by this men manual, and that's where you're into the ridiculous st stage. So you got minor, the engineerable that they allow, and then you got ridiculous. Now, when I say ridiculous stage, you can actually get some things engineered within that stage, but it gets a lot more difficult. That's where you're looking at things like pre-rego, when they do the Toyota Land Cruisers pre-rego, they can do them for I think four inch lift and 37 because they have special certifications processes like they put new diffs, axles, suspension, like they're just fully, you know, it's big money, but you can get it done by a few select people in this stage. But you know, there's obviously still limits there. Like there's just no way you're getting 40 inch tires engineered in Australia. With a GU patrol, I don't know anyone that's had 37s done. But when I was talking to my engineer, he said he was working with a guy to, they were trying to get 37s to pass all the testing. He wasn't sure if they were going to be able to, but they were trying. But I don't have an answer on that at the moment, but things like that are potentially possible if you go through you know, everything you need to. I'll leave a link to the full document, so if you want to have a read through it all, then you can. And as I said, you'll need to check your own states. One, if you are in Australia, uh, all around the world, I'm, I'm not sure how that works in other countries. Before we close the document though, I'll quickly take note of number 5.1, general safety. And this leads into the question of why get engineered? So what, what's the point? Why can't you just put 35s on and be done with it? You know, who cares? What's the difference? Well, in this document, they cover a whole list of safety reasons and why your car has to be engineered if it's above those, you know, minor legal limits. Things like, Stability, road handling capabilities, braking, ground clearance, occupant protection, risk to vulnerable road users, risk to occupants of other vehicles, driver's field of vision, unexpected vehicle behavior, impacts on other components, headlight aim. So there's a whole list of reasons there of why you can't just put big lift, big tires, ridiculous things on cars, because all these things are gonna get compromised. And then this will come back to, and you know, this is up to people individually, but I just want to make it clear for everyone watching this so that they know. This is going to affect things like insurance. So if you're in an accident, they find out your car's all illegal, not engineered, too modified. Insurance out the door. Fines, you can get pretty hefty fines from police and vehicle removed off the road. 
and all those safety reasons there that we outlined. So finally, the engineering process. Starting with who did mine, so it was Stuart from Signatory Engineering, they are in Tamworth, but Stuart comes down to my area, Port Macquarie on the New South Wales Mid North Coast. So it was lucky for me that I was able to get someone to do it locally. I didn't actually have to drive very far at all. I'd had a few phone calls with him and we sorted out a time and date to do it. Now you do need to do it at a mechanics uh, for some of it, where is it where you can get it on a hoist and probably go right over the underneath your vehicle. So we lined up to do it at S&P, Complete Automotive Import, and I'll get out of the way the cost as well, because that was the most frequently asked question I had about the engineering. So it does cost a bit of money. Uh, $3,500 is what it cost me to for the complete engineering process and getting all the cert certification and everything. Now, if you do want to get your four-wheel drive engineered, there is quite a few out there that do it these days, but I suggest you talk to them and have a good conversation with them either before you start modifying your four-wheel drive or you know even once you're in the process of it or whatever, just so you can work out exactly what things they can and can't pass with your four-wheel drive. Now, on the day, Stuart was very kind and helpful and allowed me to come with him and film the process, put up with me waving a camera around like an idiot. So he has local police permission to use this bit of road where he runs the testing. It's just a straight bit of road that he does the swerve and brake testing on so he took us out there to do those couple things now. And with the brake testing it was what were the what were the different ones you had to do? Right, I had to do a laden performance test and an unladen performance test. Also I had to do a, a heating procedure designed to simulate going down a big windy range basically. So directly after the end of that we do a performance test as well. Um, that performance test has got to be of a certain limit. Uh, then I do a what's called a recovery test. So that's just light braking uh, under, at 50 k's to zero. And then a, another performance test at the end of that, which has got to be, the figures from the final brake test have to be compared with the ones at the start. And they've got to be within a percentage of stopping distance and deceleration. Yeah. 45 stops under all different circumstances that he has to simulate and that test is required for the 35 just to make sure your brakes can stop your bigger tyres. So I have to pull the ABS out yeah. from under the bonnet. Yeah, just got to pull the fuse on it. And what's the purpose of pulling the ABS out? It's what's called a partial failure test. Yeah. So that if you had no ABS, what would the vehicle do with these big tyres on it? Yeah, right here. So the ABS is helping pull it up. Oh yeah. 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 You see when that pulled up then, I had my foot hard on the brakes and the wheels are just starting to lock and letting go like that's yeah. the ABS. Yeah, right here. Yeah. So you gotta see what it does if Without. the ABS has failed. Yes. Yeah. yeah, even without the ABS it was still good. Yeah, and I guess those 4.8 brakes are coming into play. They are coming into play, yeah. This is this is braking a lot better than your average 2D42 one. Both fuel tanks are fully loaded on the car. What is it, 190, 187 litres of fuel? By the time he's done, there's going to be no fuel left. I'm going back to the fuel station for another $400 worth of petrol. Lucky for me, I have the TB48, which has the best brakes of any patrol. And this was able to pass with the standard TB48 brakes because they are so good. It said that the 4.2 litre patrols and three litres with their brakes, normally you have to do brake upgrade to pass that test. They won't pass it on their standard brakes. The next big test he did out there was the swerve test. So you have to enter the course, swerve through the cones, and then exit the course at a certain speed. So you cut your car has to be able to get in and out of that course at at that speed, otherwise it fails. Essentially, to go through that swerve test, it's got to hit the 
start of the gate at a certain speed and the end of the gate at a certain speed. Yeah, so it's got to be able to get out of that um, exit point without slowing down too much. Correct, yeah. yeah, exactly right. This handled really well actually, yeah, it did handle well. Yeah, yeah, that's always good. Now this is where doing your suspension properly makes a world of difference, okay? There's a few things you need to note here. Number one, don't get eBay special suspension parts because he said they don't go well on this sort of testing and he can't actually normally certify them at the end of the day because they're not like well branded parts. So all the superior gear I have, when I told him that he was like bloody perfect, <laughs> bloody perfect. Superior, really good with all their arms and stuff. So you spend the money, you do it properly from the start and then you know your car's gonna pass the engineering because it handles so well. And he said that multiple times in the day. He said, this car handles really, really well. Both sway bars in, you'll definitely need, which you need both sway bars in for your car to be legal on the road as well. Uh, so it has the front and rear superior engineering super flex sway bars in it, which flex bloody well off road, but then still hold that stability on the road. Pretty much a full superior kit top to bottom, which he said made his life easier and he knows that he can trust all the superior gear. And then there's a few more little tests to complete on the day. So he has to do an exhaust noise test and make sure it has everything uh, in it, you know, muffler and a cat and all that sort of stuff. The exhaust came in just under that noise test, which was lucky. That. Yep. Just. So, just, does it? <laughs> yeah. So what's it have to be under? Uh, this is a petrol engine, so it's got to be uh, 90 decibels or less. Yeah. And it's coming in at averaging on 89 and peaked up just on 90, so it's just right. <laughs> yeah. It's just right. So. Close on that one then. Yeah, yeah. The other thing he checked on the day was to make sure my speedo was accurate. Yeah. yeah you're spot on 60 k's there, and you're at 61. No, 61, 62. And this is a 10 hertz unit, so it's it's fairly accurate. It's accurate within, I think about five centimeters, this unit. Yeah, 98, it's actually slightly under, there you go. Yeah, okay, so it's pretty close. Yeah, that's how you want it. Yeah. So you're at 99 there now, that's, wow, that's as close to 100 as you'll get. Yeah, so that speedo is pretty much bang Spot on. Spot on, yeah, that's better. My range is out by about six k's. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> This performs really well. So I was pretty stoked of all that because he said my car just flew through everything and you know it made me feel good that we did set it up properly and do it all right properly with that suspension and the speedo and the and the exhaust, all that sort of stuff. Now there's probably a few bits and pieces there I missed but that was some of the big ones that I do remember he definitely tested on the day. One other thing I just thought of was GVM. So before the day, I had to go get my car officially weighed at a weigh bridge. Cost, I can't remember, it cost about 54 bucks or something to go get all the documentation. So I weighed it, the sub tank was full, the main tank was basically nearly full. And I had most of my gear like in and on the car. I think it was 2.92 it came in at with me sitting in the car there. I think I had Demi and Zeph in the car too. So I had a fair bit of gear but it was close to that GVM. It wasn't heaps off, it came because the GVM on these is three ton. But yeah, you have to make sure you get a document to show that your car comes within GVM. And if it's like heaps under GVM, he actually puts it up to GVM to complete the brake testing and the swerve testing that. I'm pretty sure he puts water bladders in it and puts that extra weight in it because you have to complete the testing at GVM. And a quick note on GVM, I asked him about this, whether he can upgrade the GVM a bit on my car because like you can get patrols up to three and a half ton quite easily. And I checked the kits and I have everything you need to get the GVM upgraded. But he said, because it's not a specified kit, he can't do it. So that's gonna be the next thing I'm gonna to have to look into playing around with a bit, whether or not I can, you know, somehow get the parts in there I need that make it up as an actual specified kit. Because we've got the trailer now too, like when we take heaps of stuff, I put stuff on the trailer rather than in the car so it balances it out or whatever. But yeah, it's another bit of a thing. Another thing now I'm gonna to have to play around a little bit in regards to GVM. Now, once all that was done, back to SMP, where he put it on the hoist and I don't know exactly what he did. I didn't pester him too much with every question I could possibly think of. But he went right over the car for probably an hour and a half or so and took photos, measurements, documented every single thing that was going on. And so that all, can, that all now comes up in my certificate. Checks those wheel width measurements, checks your ride height measurements, checks uh, like he does things like your headlight checks, 
make sure that your brake lines um, are extended to match your suspension like I don't know there's a full list there so he went right over the car photographs and documented down every single thing that car has on it did the long range tank as well he said long range tank has to be engineered you know as I said at the start like everything that's on the car he checks you, you can't just go oh yeah I just want the tires and lift done because they have to do the whole thing top to bottom to make sure your car's legal you know checked over the bull bar my bull bars ADR compliant all that sort of stuff and so it all passed and I was super stoked about that super happy so if it doesn't pass um, you have to correct what's not corrected and then you'll come back another day and do that testing again or recheck over it or whatever depending on what it is now I won't go through the whole document but it's like 10 pages here so it's not just yeah mate your, your patrol's got bigger tires and lift good on you on your way it <laughs> specifically details every single thing that's on this car so you can see there the, what the tires were originally and now I can fit the 31575R16s on it and the next page it says this certificate addresses alternate engine induction components so he had to do the, the airbox that we modified and the snorkel which is modified exhaust system high lift suspension fitment of all alter, alternate wheels and tires brake assessment long range tank and then it basically goes through and details every single thing that's on your car there and it has all the testing it says there you know talks about the 31575 tires Fit to the vehicle, they give a 10.6% size increase. Speedo has been um, altered, headlight height. Brake test procedures, and he's given the results here. Talks about the fuel tank, like parking brakes. There's literally nothing in here that he doesn't talk about. And he's given codes there for all the things that are engineered and modified. So what does that mean now that you have that certificate? Well, once you get it, so I took it down to the RMS, Roads, Maritime Services, whatever it is, and give all the paperwork to them, and then they officially stamp it next to my rego for that car. So it's officially all now in with the registration that this is a uh, engineered car with all those modifications. So when the police uh, scan your number plate, if you're out on the highway or something, it will come up. This car has been, you know, engineered, whatever it says, something like that. This is a certified engineered car. When they look at it and think, oh, geez, those tires are a bit big. And then they'll see the engineering number. And then if they pull you up, obviously I'm going to keep that certificate in my car now. So as long as everything on my car matches up with that certificate, then should, and I say should, be all good. Because you still hear stories that even though people get their car engineered, the police still defect them anyway so hopefully that gave everyone a good insight into the engineering process hopefully it didn't bore you to death but at least you got good information there if you were wondering about getting your car engineered or what it involved actually one other thing i just thought of so my car is engineered in new south wales okay but each law has diff each state has different laws so when i drive into say queensland or victoria does that mean my car is now illegal no my car is fully legal with a New South Wales rego so because it's attached to my registration just the same as I you know anyone that has New South Wales number plates once you drive into another state your car's not illegal so my car will be fully legal wherever I drive it in Australia for the suspension the tires exhaust all that stuff I had done the only thing there is if your car is sold and re-registered or if you move re-registered in another state that's where it can become tricky so some states will accept another state's engineering report and some states will not will not so depending on where you get engineered and then if you move or sell it to another state it unfortunately may have to be done to be registered fully legal with that state we'll finish up the video there if you have any more questions um comment them down below and i'll try and answer what i can and, and just remember this is not me as an engineer and a qualified expert on this stuff this is just a personal experience story that i'm sharing and trying to give the information that i learned along the way but don't take everything i say for word i suggest you talk to the professionals because i don't want to be held responsible for anyone here all right that's it i'll see everyone in the next video patrol's engineered yes boy boom boom in today's video, we're going to talk about my two set. <clears throat> <clears throat> and what it took and what it took to get the patrol fully engineered and 
So you're looking at a patrol now. <clears throat> this car is now fully alert. <clears throat> my plan, my plan of this patrol build was always to get it engineered. My pl which there was a pit, which there was a short period there where. So it means as soon as you put those. So it means as soon as you put one of those mods on that aren't within that. So, the engineering process. <clears throat> so, finally, the engineering process. <clears throat> so, so I do have my other, so I do have my rims back on. So I do have my rims back on. So I do have...